It is so much pressure following up preaching right after that song. At one time, I remember we, back when I still did it, we did that song, and I had to preach right afterwards. And I was completely out of breath the whole time. And next time I told Corey, whoever says, I don't know if y'all do the order of service or not, but you got to do that drama first because i got to have plenty of time to recuperate. But um, tonight I'm going to be talking about uh, what it means to be a servant. And um, the title is Save to Serve. So if you will turn with me to Luke chapter 10, verse 30. This is the story of the Good Samaritan that Jesus preaches in the Sermon on the Mount. And it says, A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over, or a Levite walked over, and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of them. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If the bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now which of these three would you say was a neighbor to this man? Asked, was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits, Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go do the same. Y'all may be seated. So, basically a recap of that story is there's a man injured on the side of the road. And he was attacked by bandits. um, Stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, left him half dead on the side of the road. And the first person that comes is a priest. And he's probably thinking, man, I'm in the clear now. I got Brother Randy coming up here. Um, Obviously, he's a man of God, so obviously he's going to help me out. And he passed me right by, which is not what Brother Randy would do, but just for the sake of um, whatever, hypothesis, whatever. (laughs) I lost my train of thought. But then the next man came was a Levite, which was basically like a, a deacon in our time said he walked over looked at him lying there but he also passed by on the other side so two religious leaders have already came up to this man both times probably thinking if anybody's going to help me it's got to be these dudes and they walk right past him and the next one that comes by is a Samaritan and you have to realize that the man it says that the man who was injured was a Jew and the man that came by was a Samaritan and Jews and Samaritans were not meant to mix that's why when Jesus met the woman at the well, she said, Jesus, you're a Jew. I'm a, or she probably didn't know his name, didn't say Jesus. But she said, uh, you're a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan. How can you ask me for a drink? Because that was not kosher in their time, was for them to even mix it all. But the Samaritan stepped over you know, all of the societal boundaries and helped this man after both religious leaders passed him by. It says he sued his wounds with oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey took him to an inn where he took care of him, paid for it, and said, if anything else um, comes, I'll pay the rest of it. So after he told this story, Jesus did, he told the disciples, now go and do the same. And can you bring up my second scripture? I completely forgot to read it, but now's a good time anyway. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. And when I was a kid, growing up, Something I heard over and over and over again in church was good works can't get you heaven. Can't get you to heaven. Good deeds can't get you to heaven. Doing good things can't get you to heaven. And as a kid, I kind of honestly asked myself, why do we do it then? And then I read the scripture. Bring it back up one more time. Please. And it says, the reason you do it is so that your deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. So the reason that we are kind of people the reason that we show love is because whenever they see what we have and whenever we show them the love of Christ they want to be a part of what we have and that's how we share the gospel and we're sometimes the only Jesus that people see sometimes I see the way that Christians treat people and think no wonder people have a misconstrued view of who we really are 
Um, there's something really controversial coming around. Taylor Swift came out with a new song. And um, in the music video, uh, there's like a bunch of Christians supposed to be holding up signs saying really mean stuff. And people are obviously attacking Taylor Swift, and there's a whole lot of controversial, you know, and I'm not saying you shouldn't be, but that's really how a lot of people see Christians. All they see is the judgment. And if all we show people is the judgment and not the love, it's like Brother Ricky said, right after all of the deportation went down, he said, uh, mercy without justice is not mercy at all. And the only way that we can show the love of Christ is not only show judgment, but show love. And 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, we are Christ's ambassadors, and God is making his appeal through us. We represent God. And the reason that we do good deeds for people, even when they do us wrong, so that they can notice something different about us. And when they ask you, that's a perfect chance to witness to them. And that's what it's all about. We're called to share the love of Christ. And sometimes the best way to share the gospel is not go into a five-page point essay in the EE outline. Sometimes it's just sitting down showing somebody the love of Christ. And um, reminds me of when I was in Costa Rica. We would go to impoverished areas, handing out people rice, which is pretty much all they ate, rice and beans. And um, we were in the park one time, and this man was kind of sitting in the corner, and his eyes were bloodshot. He just, he, he wasn't having a good time, you could tell. And so we grabbed some bags and walked over to him. And before we even shared the gospel to this man, he was bawling. And it was like he had already accepted Christ before we said anything to him. And he did accept Christ after we went into the gospel because when people see us show the love of Christ, that makes them want to be a part of what we have. And it's kind of like my dad always told me, um, he used to be a salesman of vacuums. <laughs> yeah, rainbow vacuums. Um, he used to tell me, the only way that people are going to buy your product is if you act excited about what you're sharing them. And sometimes people share Christ and it's like, do you even really have the dude? I mean, why would I want to be a part of this, you know? You don't look very excited. They're not like our youth group, you know, running around, dancing, showing how much excitement they have that we're followers of Christ, which is how it ought to be. And um, I also heard it like this, showing good deeds. I heard it in the analogy of a dump truck. People are like dump trucks. And we go throughout our day um, picking up garbage. Maybe when you wake up in the morning, you expect your wife to have you cook breakfast, but she didn't, so now you're really mad, and she's really mad that you expected her to cook you breakfast. So you're both picking up garbage, and then when you go to work, both of you, uh, people are being really mean to you, and you're picking up garbage. And then throughout your day, stuff is just piling up and piling up, and sometimes, or every time, a dump truck gets all this garbage, what do they have to do? They have to let it out. And sometimes people are having a terrible day and they let all of it out on you. But we have to show them the love of Christ anyway and know that it's like I heard Priscilla Shire put it this one time. She had uh she talked about a fall festival that she was at and there was this game, it was like whack a mole, like they had a little table set up and little things would shoot up through the holes and you'd have to smack them. And she was with her, uh, I believe it was her son. No, a lady in front of her was with her son. And the little kid was asking his mama, why does he keep hitting the things if nothing happens when he does it? They just keep coming back up. And he's getting so worked up just talking about it and talking about it that he goes up there and he rips the cloth off of the top of the table and there's just two men sitting under there with little puppets that they were sticking through the holes. And Priscilla Shire said, there's always the unseen impact in what you can't see. And when we fight each other off of things that just offend us, we're fighting the wrong enemy. And we can never defeat the enemy if we don't you know, put up a united front against the real enemy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And so we've got to know who the real enemy is if we're going to fight, and it's not each other. But your intentions are just as important as the good deed itself. And when you do a good deed, the Bible tells us not to try to tell everyone about it or not show everyone about it. You know, when you're putting tithes in the offering plate, 
waving it around for you said at the end or anytime you could do a good deed telling everybody around you um, that's not how God intended it in Matthew 6 1 and 4 it says beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them for then you will have no reward from your father who is in heaven thus when you give to the needy sound no trumpet as the hypocrites do in synagogues and in the streets that they may be praised by others truly I say to you that they have received their reward but when you give to the needy do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that they may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you and sometimes you may feel like all these good deeds that you're doing nobody sees you but God does and God says that you will have your reward in heaven and if you try to you know get the approval of others in your good deeds he says you will have no reward and he says that's what the Pharisees were doing in every one of their good deeds you know they would sound trumpets and in, in the synagogues and be praised by others but he says if you do it in secret it doesn't seem like anybody sees you but I see you and I will reward you in due season and it says that if you do these things with the right intentions your father sees and Galatians 6 9 says let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not as we have therefore opportunity let us go and do good unto all men and you start me some music brother um, in the story of right before Jesus is about to be crucified crucified and he's with the disciples he tells them that he's gonna wash their feet and of course they're saying um, I believe it was Peter that said it he said um, how could you wash my feet he's basically saying Jesus you're way above this because washing people's feet was the job of a servant and Jesus was the son of God and these disciples felt like they were not worthy and Jesus was beyond worthy of not having to wash feet and Jesus said if you don't let me wash your feet then you don't belong to me and the whole thing that Jesus was trying to show them was how to be a servant he said if you want to be a leader you first have to be a servant and Jesus knew all of this time this was after Judas had already made the decision to crucify him. And this is after God had already revealed it to Jesus that Judas had made this decision. But Jesus still washed his feet. And sometimes when people do us wrong, it's really easy to be nice to people that have never done anything to us. And it's really easy to show people the love of Christ when they've never wronged us. But God has called us to forgive. God has called us to be servants. And servants is not just forgiven it's not just doing good deeds it's consciously making a decision every day of how can I help every person I come in contact with so as we stand all over the building um, I'm closing this scripture it says it's Mark 10 43 and it says whoever wants to be a leader among you this is what Jesus said you must first be a servant and whoever wants to be first among you must be the slave of everyone else for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So if the Son of Man came to serve, I think it's safe to say we came to do the same thing. And that was the whole purpose of Jesus saving us. We were saved to serve. So in every um, opportunity you get this week, just show people the love of Christ. Even when the people, even the people who have wronged you, um, the best way to show people share the gospel is to show people the love of Christ because when they see what we're really about they want to be a part of this so I'm going to dismiss this in prayer God we thank you so much for uh, the words that you've spoken God and we ask that you would or give us the, a servant's heart